morning everyone. This is Abhay. I am working with uh, Market Research Mission, a division of Wise Guy Reports. This company is, uh, is a market research and consulting firm. We serve uh, in the eight verticals, be it uh, aerospace, automotive, healthcare, chemicals and uh, other domains as well. So, the objective of this organization is to you know, deliver a market insights and market intelligence and competitive intelligence to the clients so that uh, they can take a uh, strategic business decision in the, in the forecast years. So, uh, I personally take care of aerospace and defense domain. So, now directly jumping to the report, I would like to focus on few parameters for what is the objective of doing research and uh, on what basis we select titles and what is the objective of selecting titles and how this is going to benefit my end customer. So, coming to, uh, to the aerospace and defense, as we know this, uh, this particular domain is quite sensitive, you know, capital in intensive, requires a lot of investments, requires a lot of R&D, you know, and uh, various uh, rules and regulations are attached to this industry. If you uh, talk about the global picture, yes, North America and Europe is, you know, by default they are the largest uh, defense, you know, uh, they, they have uh, close to 80 to 90% of the market share if you talk about the across aerospace and defense industry. Yes, but at the same time we should not ignore the emerging markets like China, Asia, Pacific and all because uh, uh, with, the, with the growing disposable income and uh, with the growing infrastructure and uh, the growing GDP, they, they have started investing in their uh, defense spending as well. Yeah. So uh, look at look at uh, last five years trend. Uh, China's uh, defense budget has grown tremendously. At the same time, India's defense budget as well. Ha they have also grown, but not significantly. But yes, uh, looking at the you know uh, different scenarios and conflicts, uh, we we have to raise some expenditure as well. So yes, uh, these countries are uh, doing exten extensive spending on those markets. So now uh, this was over short overview of the aerospace and defense. Now coming back to the uh, our market research future. So uh, let's let's uh, start with one of one of the report uh, which we have recently published, uh, which is currently in pipeline. So the report name is uh, Aerospace Fasteners Market. Uh, so to start with uh, the market, uh, we have covered this aerospace and fasteners market in our recent study report. So uh, this particular word, fastener, it's itself is a. This is basically industrial products. Uh, where you know the industries like uh, automotive, construction, aerospace and defense and uh, other small industries uh, are very much into this. So yeah, automobile and infrastructure construction is a major major chunk of the market. But whereas aerospace and fasteners is, itself is a big market which is approx uh, 6 to 7 billion as of, as of today. And uh, as per our study and uh, as, as per the estimates which we have done and as per our forecast, we expect this market to grow till uh, close to 8 to 9 billion and is expected to grow at a CHGR of uh, close to 7.5% over a period of say 6 years or 7 years. Okay. So now coming to the aerospace fasteners market. So what basically we have done is we have tried to identify the best possible segment for our end customer. So what we have done is, so we have segregated this report in terms of by segment and by geography. So by segment we have covered commercial application, second is military, and third is Sorry, basically uh, th th these are the two broad segments which we have covered. So, <coughs> we all know that commercial application by default is as a very big market as compared to military aerospace. Commercial application which basically includes your uh, wide body aircrafts, narrow body aircrafts and regional and thermal objects. Which basically covers around 60 to 62% of the market as of 16. And as per our forecast, we predict that this will retain the top position till 2021 and uh, it will. Uh, it is expected to reach at least 62% to 63% of the market in the forecast period. See the factors behind this growth is, we know commercial aviation market has 
grown tremendously over the of say four or five years after the recovery of North America. And yes, and the growing investments by uh, Apache region, Middle East region, because uh, they have been uh, into this procurements. We have seen a lot of orders have uh, come from the uh, markets like China, Asia Pacific, Middle East. So, with a growing number of fleets, with a growing number of aircraft orders, we expect the more number of aircrafts, there are more chances of fastness getting into it. At the same time, if you look at the future deliveries and the number of aircrafts which are getting replaced, so there is maximum chances of aircrafts getting into the maintenance, overhaul and repair. So yes, this fastness market have two markets. One is line fit and second is retrofit. Retrofit is a MRO, MRO market which we cannot ignore it because it itself is a very big market. Though we cannot compare it with the, uh, the final assembly market but yes, MRO itself is a big market. So this commercial location in our research study we have included both line as well as retrofit market. So, we will discuss this in detail later. So now coming to the military market. Yes, military market as of today, as per our estimate, we assume that as of 16, commercial was 60%, so military was approximately 40%, 38%. And the same market is expected to retain the same position because uh, see the reason behind commercial growth, which I have explained earlier, military is uh, it's, it's, it's something which is which has not seen a tremendous growth. Yes, there is a constant a stable growth over a period of time. A lot of defense cuts in uh, Western countries, North America, Europe, we all notice that. So because of that, the spending in major defense aircraft programs have reduced. The number of recruitments, the number of orders have reduced. But yes, this was offset by, again, the developing nations like China, India, Philippines, Malaysia, and other top defense spending countries. So here, we have segregated this in terms of, in terms of, Transport, combat, and so <clears throat> here we have segregated military into transport, combat, and rotor craft as helicopter markets. See, transport with the by its very nature, it's, it's a big aircraft which maximum constitutes fastness. Followed by your combat, your fighter jets, and the rest is followed by rotor craft and helicopters market. So, this is all about your our 16 and 21 forecast. So, this is our segmentation in terms of in terms of aircraft class. Now, coming to the geography section. In the regions part, we have uh, covered all regions, including North America, India. There is a row east, Middle East and Africa and Asia Pacific. So as per our study, as of 16, the America's market was the largest market which constitutes approx approx 45% of the commercial aircraft fastest market, followed by EMEA, which is uh, close to 30%, and then followed by APAC. This is as of 2016. Now, see the trend. America is very stable market, it's all saturated. Yet yeah, there's a recovery in the market, but uh, looking at the deliveries, looking at the procurements, looking at the demand coming from the Emerging markets like Middle East and APAC, the trend, the percentage shift has gone towards APAC and India. So, so keeping uh, micro and macro indicators uh, into the uh, factor, we have analyzed and we have seen the trend, we have seen the market dynamics, and we have identified that the shift towards this market share has went to this. So, APAC is expected to grow by 35%. That is the in terms of market share account. This America is a slight decline, but it doesn't mean that it's losing its market share. Yes, it itself, because even in 2021, this market will lead, America's market will lead, followed by your uh, uh, EMEA, that is close to 75 and 25. See, 
look at the look at the jump in Asia Pacific market. It's because it's all because of the growing air fleets, the growing number of aircrafts in the region. So all those factors, and also look at the number of aircrafts getting replaced and the number of uh, and the opportunities uh, with relates to aftermarket service. That is MRO of the aircrafts. APAC is the driving factor behind this. So that's why the market share of APAC in the forecast period, which Wise Guy reports, which market research future has covered, is 35%. And this percentage has come with our thorough understanding after you know, doing proper research, looking after market dynamics, trying to understand the trends, challenges, opportunities, trades, and after discussing with various stakeholders in the industry. So we have arrived at this particular percentage. So this is all about my geography section which I have covered in my report. So now the uh, third section and one of the most important section is uh, we always discuss about market dynamics. So for this particular uh, title, for this particular market, uh, what all we have covered. So now looking at the dynamics. See, we have covered difference challenges opportunities this section itself itself is a very important factor because uh, this not only you know define us to you know uh, to uh, understand the market also to understand the the forecast of the market okay because uh, okay so first we'll discuss about the uh, trends Earlier I have discussed about drivers and trends. So drivers are nothing but uh, yes, emerging demands from the APAC region. Second is the growing fleet size. Okay. Now trends is like uh, you will see in the aircraft component, it's, it's a mix of fasteners, composites, and various other materials like steel, aluminium, and others. So in the upcoming years, the use of titanium fasteners is expected to increase. There are various types of fasteners where titanium is expected to leave the market. And now look at the size and the uh, next emission aircrafts like uh, A380, 777X, and Boeing 747, 757. So these are the aircrafts which are uh, very much uh, wide in nature. These are wide body aircrafts. And these are long body aircrafts, which is expected to drive the market. We should not ignore narrow body aircrafts because uh, the fleets and the demand and the procurement and the orders for those aircrafts are higher in terms of percentage than the wide body aircrafts. Now the challenges associated with this, uh, this market is, uh, see uh, the uh, aftermarket market or the maintenance repair overall market is a big challenge for this. Because fasteners which are getting into the, uh, you know, the first line assembly and the fast fasteners which are getting into, into the aftermarket services, it, uh, it, it depends the quality of fasteners and uh, because a bad quality of fasteners will devalue the, you know, the uh, value of the aircraft. So getting the good fasteners into the uh, retrofit aircraft is quite important. Now, opportunities is yes, I um, keep focusing on the emerging markets, emerging markets because the reason being they are investing aggressively. Look at uh, the least, uh, recent news uh, China is investing some 100 billion in their aircraft or aviation modernization. India will uh, invest close to 5 billion over a bit of 10 years in their airport and aircraft modernization. So, these markets have a lot of opportunities, and uh, with this news, a lot of uh, aircrafts coming up. Look at the passenger air traffic. India, in the last two years, have uh, outpaced all other regions in terms of air, aircraft passenger air, air tra tra traffic. So, with the growing air traffic, the chances of uh, procurement, the chances of uh, orders for this air aircraft is growing up. One more section is uh, competitive landscape, uh, where we have covered uh, almost uh, all top competitors which constitute approximately 90-95 percent of the markets. Yeah. So, yeah, now the uh, main competitors in this markets are uh, 3B fasteners, Alcoa, BNP Specialists, KLX, Lissi Aerospace, NAFCO, Stanley Engineered Engineering Fastening, and Augment Global Technologies. See, the reason behind picking those 10 or 15 companies are because they constitute approximately 90 to 94 percent of the market and uh, this is one of the parameters where we can judge this particular companies constitutes 95 percent of the confidence level so we assume whatever sales revenue gonna come from these companies 
will derive from market for that particular year or for the forecast years. Yes, so these are the name of the companies. Now, we are not covering the names. We are also talking about the company's overview, their financials. We also talk about the SORT analysis and the competitive landscape. The competitive landscape, you know, is one of the parameters where, you know, the other vendors gets insights how the other companies are performing, how, what kind of strategies they are implementing, what kind of developments they are doing, and what kind of new products they are coming up. So this will give you the, you know, the market consolidation picture, whether, whether the industry is moving towards partnership or consolidation or a joint venture and many other, other stuff. So, so these important parameters are all covered in the competitive landscape section. And this is one of the important sections which we, uh, we focus extensively. Because this brings a lot of insights about the about the market, and because these companies play a critical role to you know uh, to derive the market trend, challenges, opportunities, and threats, everything. So that's why our focus is main into this key defense companies, followed by some of the prominent men. Now to conclude this uh, <coughs> topic, aerospace fastest market, as I've discussed in my in an initial discussion, where the market is expected to reach close to eight billion to nine billion. So the emerging markets which you are trying this region is APAC and EMEA. Yes, America will play a major role here, but yes, the growth will come from these regions. And second thing would be uh, the uh, dynamics which I have discussed, the growing fleets, the orders, the challenges associated with the market in terms of uh, use of titanium fastness or uh, MROs and all, this will play a critical role. But uh, the growth of this market will not be hampered because of these small challenges. Rather, uh, with, a, with a growing uh, uh, GDP infrastructure and the investments in upcoming aircrafts, next generation aircrafts, the growth in this aerospace fa uh, fastness market is expected to grow uh, close to 7-8% in the forecast period. We at WiseGuy Report, Market Research Future, uh, we, uh, we forecast for 5 years, say 16 to 21, or it would be 16 to 27, 10 years forecast. So this is what we do. You can avail this report in our website, that is marketsearchfuture.com and the pricing and all discussions can be done by our sales and business development team. So that's all, that's all from, the, uh, from the aerospace and defense and the company side. Thank you.